welcome once again to physics lesson today our topic first topic of discussion is mobility mobility means you know there are different types of materials which allow the passage of current through it so in such materials there are different types of charge carriers actually in metals the charge carriers are free electrons in electrolytes you know the charge carriers are positive and negative ions coming to semiconductors there may be free electrons as well as holes also which are responsible for conduction so with regard to them that means the type of charge carriers we define a term called mobility okay so these mobile charge carriers are responsible for conductivity in metals electrons in electrolyte positive and negative ions and semiconductors by uh, what holes and free electrons the mobility mu it is represented by the letter mu it is defined as the ratio of magnitude of drift velocity to the electric field strength so magnitude of drift velocity to electric field strength so it is not a vector quantity it is a scalar quantity mobility so that ratio is termed as mobility so for by substituting for a drift velocity we will get the expression for mobility as e tau by m where e is the charge of the electron m is its mass and tau is the relaxation time so we get the si unit of mobility as coulomb meter per newton per second or it is meter square per volt per second so note the si unit of mobility it's not a common one okay so study well the unit si unit of mobility now coming to the next topic that is limitations of ohm's law we have already discussed ohm's law what is ohm's law under constant physical conditions potential difference between the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current passing through it that's what ohm's law says okay but there are situations where this ohm's law is not hold good or it is violated the ohm's law is violated so we are discussing the three situations where ohm's law is not obeyed okay the first case is v ceases to be proportional to i as we know v is proportional to i by ohm's law so the expected graph between v and i is a straight line passing through origin so in the gra in the diagram the dashed line shows that expected graph but usually the conductors show the other behavior that means that blue line that means in the lower temperature region and all this graph will be showing exact similar that means theoretical behavior itself but as the current increases okay it shows a deviation that means the behavior it shows a deviation from ohm's law that's what we mean by v ceases to be proportional to i so that is the case where the conductor becomes a non ohmic conductor it becomes a non ohmic conductor so in low current region when the current is less it shows that means v is proportional to i but when the current increases up to a high value v ceases to be proportional to i now the second case the second case is the relation between v and i depends on the sign of v so this is graph of that case this is the graph vi graph of a uh, diode pn junction diode the upper part we call as forward characteristic and this part we call as reverse characteristics we will be studying about the diode in detail in 14th chapter okay so this shows the vi graph of a semiconductor diode you can see that in the forward characteristic part and reverse characteristic part so in when it is forward biased or forward biased condition the current is in milliampere range and in the reverse biased state the current is in 
micro ampere range so range of current itself is different for the same object when the voltages are uh, what up reversed in its direction forward biased means uh, the, it is in forward condition that means positive to positive like that then reverse biased means the polarity is just reversed so when the polarity of the voltage is reversed the uh, what the range of current itself is getting changed through large value okay that's what we mean by the relation between v and i depends on the sign of v so the difference in these two regions is this that means if uh, in what what type of connection here we have just opposite connection of the cell we will have in this connection that means reverse biased state so with that change alone the current range of current itself is changing from milliampere to microampere so that's what we mean by the relation between v and i depends on the sign of v and once again this graph this is the characteristic curve of a junction diode now the third case the relation between v and i is not unique so here one example is given this is the variation of current versus voltage for gallium arsenide so here voltage is taken along x axis and current is taken along y axis so the thing is this you can see from the graph there are different types of regions different regions of the graph you can see this region this re region v is proportional to i that means it obeys ohm's law you can call it as ohmic region or linear region okay here it becomes curved the graph becomes curved so we call it as non linear region look here the graph is going down means the if you find to the slope there no you will get it to be negative means it shows negative resistance so that region of the graph we call as negative resistance region this is what we mean by relation between v and i is not unique so in this graph itself we got three region linear region non linear region and negative resistance region so this is a typical graph shown by a substance called gallium arsenide so these are the three situations where ohm's law is found to be violated so this is a very important question okay as such it will come a direct question now we will discuss the resistivities of some materials we have already discussed resistivity shows the nature of material so for different materials resistivities will be different so coming to this table we have first two columns only you need to look now so you have for silver the lowest value of resistivity that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter then comes copper then comes aluminium like that it goes and coming to alloys nichrome it's somewhat larger than the individual that means metals that is 100 into 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter for manganese it is 48 into 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter so that's about conductors coming to semiconductors their resistivity is somewhat large that means 3.5 into 10 raised to minus 5 for carbon or the allotrope of carbon graphite it has that value then germanium 0.46 coming to silicon it is 2300 coming to insulators their resistivity value is very high 2.5 into 10 raised to 5 so we can say that it is the resistivity which decides whether a material is a conductor semiconductor or insulator so if the resistivity value is very low that material turn out to be a conductor if it is very high it will be surely an insulator and if it lies between the two ranges not too low not too high surely that material will be a semiconductor so it is the resistivity which decides whether a material is a conductor semiconductor or an insulator there are 
two types of resistors which are used in laboratory purposes. They are wire bound resistors and carbon resistors. Wire bound resistors are made by winding wires of alloys like nichrome, manganin, constantin, etc. Alloys are preferred over individual metals because they have got very high resistivity. Metals also have high resistivity and the important fact is this that is their resistivity is practically insensitive to change in temperature. In the case of alloys like nichrome, manganin, constantin and all their resistivity is practically insensitive. What do you mean by insensitive? That means with the change in temperature their resistivity will not change much. Because of that reason, we use nichro, manganin or constantin to make wire bound resistors. The usual resistance boxes which we use in physics lab and all know, they are of wire bound resistors. The type is wire bound resistor. Small resistors also you might have seen that the bo small boxes, black color box in our lab, we have kept 1 ohm, 2 ohm like that. That also is wire bound resistor. And this wire bound resistors usually they come in the range a fraction of an ohm to few hundreds of ohms. Okay, so that is the usual range of that wire bound resistors. Okay, so wire bound resistors are made with alloys, not with metals. The other type of uh, available resistors, they are carbon resistors. Carbon resistors are more common than wire bound resistors. It is very difficult to make the wire bound resistors, maintain the wire bound resistors, expensive also it is. But the case with carbon resistors, no, very easy to make and very cheap also. The cost of one carbon resistor may be 1 rupee or something like that, maybe less than that. So you can see in picture the appearance of a carbon resistor. So very small it is, it is and it is less expensive also, not at all expensive compared to wire bound resistors, carbon resistors expense is very less. Okay, so what is the case with the carbon resistor? So it is made of carbon and uh, all the carbon resistors they have the same form that means small piece of carbon in the middle and the two leads conducting leads are there that is the appearance of carbon resistor. So how can we distinguish different uh, resistors of different values? So to denote the values of carbon resistors there is a color coding system that's what we are going to discuss. So in carbon resistors, there are some colored rings. Rings are there which are used to indicate the value of resistance. So colored rings on the carbon resistor shows the value of what resistance of that particular carbon resistor. Actually, there are three colored rings to indicate the value of resistor. The first two rings are the significant figures of resistances. Significant figures means we will just write to that value. We will be explaining it. And the third ring indicates the decimal multiplier after that. Okay. So, first two rings are the significant figures in the measurement. Just like 1, 0, 1, 2 like that. So, 1, 2 if we write it is 12. 2, 2 if we write 22 like that. That is what we mean by significant figures. And the third ring indicates the decimal multiplier 10 raised to 1, 10 raised to 2 like that. Okay, so the third, the three colored rings indicate the value of the resistor. So what about that color coding? Which all colors we use for which all values? For that one uh, order is there. Okay, what is that order? First let's discuss that order. Black, brown, uh, red orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, grey, white, gold, gold, silver and no colour let it be. So till this white we will consider. Okay, anyway we have to learn no. So black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, grey, white. So you take first letter of each colour. So what is it? B, B, 
okay roy okay bb roy so bb roy stands for what black brown red orange yellow then g comes b comes okay g stands for green and b stands for blue so we can call it great britain so bb roy of great britain okay then next comes violet then comes gray again g comes and then comes white that means w so v g w so what we said b b roy of great britain has very good wife is that clear very v stands for violet good g stands for gray w stands for that means very good wife wife okay w stands for white so this is the shortcut to recollect that color coding bb roy of great britain has a very good wife so in that order we have to keep in mind then only we can write that associated numbers okay so black brown red orange yellow green blue violet gray white then the other three colors you keep in mind gold silver then no color now associated with these colors the numbers are taken in the order 0 to 9 so black to white starts with black ends at white it is from 0 to 9 and multiplier values like first one it is 1 that means 10 raised to 0 second one is 10 raised to 1 third one 10 raised to 2 fourth 10 raised to 3 like that it goes so up to white it is okay the power is 10 raised to 9 because white that number also is 9 so power decimal multiplier it is 10 raised to 9 then for gold the multiplier is 10 raised to minus 1 and for silver the multiplier is 10 raised to minus 2 take care for gold and silver in this column nothing is there got it yes then comes one more that means tolerance because we spoke only about three rings actually in almost all the carbon resistors one more ring will be there these three rings will be given together and at the other end you will have one more ring that ring gives the tolerance value tolerance means the possibility of error in that value so whatever value we take for example 350 ohm so in making that 350 ohm carbon resistor what is the possible error that's what we mean by tolerance so tolerance is given in terms of percentage so that is shown by that fourth colored ring in that carbon resistor so take care these three rings will be given together and one will be alone that fourth ring stands for what tolerance and only three colors are used to show tolerance which are those three colors gold silver and no color so gold silver and no color so if it is gold means how much is the possibility of error five percentage if it is silver the possibility is ten percentage and if there is no color that means if only three colored rings are there it means that there is more error in that making of carbon resistor and that error possibility of error is 20 percentage so that fourth ring tells us about that tolerance hope it is clear so what is that code hope you got it b b roy of great britain has a very good wife okay the rest you keep in mind gold silver and no color now so uh, about that fourth ring that is fourth color silver or gold shows the tolerance 10 percentage or 5 percentage if there is no fourth ring the tolerance is 20 percentage okay now we have one diagram you just look in the diagram so this is what i told first three are together okay first three together and the last one no fourth one in this diagram it is shown somewhat separated for us to identify or distinguish 
but actually there are the these three will be given very close to each other and the fourth will be separated okay so here it is first that means you have green then comes blue and the third ring is which one orange so as i said first two stands for the significant figures so first green first digit then blue second digit then the third ring stands for decimal multiplier and the fourth ring stands for tolerance so here what it will be first digit you look it is green so you just recollect that b b roy of great britain so g stands for that uh, what great so b b b starts with the zero then brown again one r red that is two orange it is uh, what three then yellow is four then green comes as five so first significant figure is five then comes blue great britain so next is blue so 56 so 56 so first significant figures are 56 two significant figures into then 10 to the power what the third ring is orange in color orange stands for what three so 10 raised to three so this is the value of this particular resistance with the tolerance what is the tolerance uh, what gold it is so plus or minus five so when we write the resistance value we will write it as okay we will write it as 56 into 10 raised to 3 plus or minus 5 percentage that much ohm that much ohm is the answer okay so this is how we interpret the color coding of resistors so in the previous we here we have that value that is 56 into 10 cube with the tolerance of 5 percentage hope it is clear so don't forget bb roy of great britain has very good y so carbon resistors are widely used see uh, nowadays carbon resistors have undergone reduction in size again and again with the ad, ad, means invention of nanotechnology and all no the size of carbon resistors smaller than i don't know the size of the tip of the pin like that it has come down these carbon resistors which we use because we need with the naked eye and all what we whatever we do know we need some size so in usual practice for making some circuits and all we'll be using this carbon resistors okay and the advantage of this carbon resistor compared to wire bound resistor is this that is they are very cheap very compact also but wire bound resistors they are very big in size when you come to physics lab you will be able to see big wooden boxes in which these wires are wound and kept so wire bound resistors they are big in size and expensive compared to that carbon resistors are very easy to use now let's discuss some examples of this color coding so first we have a resistor in which the colored rings are red 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 and silver so as as we said first two stands for what significant figures so it is red red stands for 2 so 22 into 10 to the power 2 because three rings are red in color then plus or minus how much percentage 10 so 10 percentage error that much ohm will be the answer so that is 22 into 10 square ohm plus or minus 10 percentage then coming to the second case that is you can see in the diagram yellow violet brown gold yellow yellow stands for which color yellow stands for which number four and violet stands for you can recollect that bb roy of great britain by practice it will come okay so practice yourself so 47 into brown it is so black brown brown 10 10 to the power 1 so 10 raised to 1 so that much plus or minus gold is 5 percentage 
So, you can write it as 470 plus or minus 5 percentage that much ohm is the answer. Hope you followed. Next, here we have yellow, violet, red. So, again simple example yellow 4, violet 7, then red stands for 10 square. Again gold, so the answer is 47 into 10 square plus or minus 5 percentage. Then one written example you just look you have blue gray and black then no color so four rings are like this blue gray black so if it is blue it is six then gray it is eight so 68 into black so multiply 10 raised to zero that is one then no color means 20 percentage so, it is 68 into 10 raised to 0 plus or minus 20 percentage or 68 plus or minus 20 percentage O. Okay, I think it, ha it has been clear for you. So, only this much for today. Thank you.